Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to a brand new offering. I am normally your astrologer, Nadia Shah, but today I'm gonna to share something a little bit different. As part of my personal practice for decades now, I have used tarot in conjunction with astrology when especially doing readings for myself. And I wanted to share some of that love that I have for tarot uh, with you here today by doing a pick a card for the month of August reading. Now this is actually part of or insight into how I like to approach tarot because I will be having a series of classes coming up with synchronicityuniversity.com, fully four classes on tarot for astrologers and the connection between astrology and tarot, two classes on the major arcana, two classes on the minor arcana as well. Now for today, I am going to focus on the major arcana and I will be choosing cards among the major arcana. Uh, the deck I am using is called the Kingdom Within Tarot. Now this is a, a deck that I see a lot of influences uh, within from Aleister Crowley's Toth deck. And this deck I started using about three years ago after using Aleister Crowley's deck for oh, about 15 years, and I have found that it has uh, brought even more depth of perception and a more modern understanding uh, in a way that I'm really enjoying right now. So I wanted to share some of that love with you here today. So let's get into it. I'm going to choose six cards, and I would invite you to choose a number between one and six for insights into what you can expect coming up for the month of August all the very powerful things that are gonna be happening astrologically in August, of course, I will be here to continue to explore it with you week to week in the monthly horoscopes, weekly diving in deeply in the superstar space as well. For all of the things that I'm mentioning, of course, there are links in the description below. So have you chosen your number? Maybe take a deep breath with me right now. And as you breathe, focus in what number comes to mind between one and six. And as you have settled on a number, I will start to interpret them now. So number one is the devil. It's so interesting. I was actually meditating on this card not too long ago. And the reason is because normally when we think about the devil, uh, what comes to mind is, of course, hell, right? Devil is the king of hell. But what is so fascinating is that the astrological association with the devil card is the sign of Capricorn and the planet of Saturn, of course. And on this particular deck, we see Saturn right above the head of the figure shown in this deck. To me, that is um, especially intriguing because it does suggest an awareness of the responsibilities that are going to be there for you this month in particular. With Capricorn, it is about focusing on the long-term goal, and it is about understanding what sacrifices are worth being made and making, and maybe what aren't. It is Saturn that represents limitation, because up until very recently in human history, Saturn was the furthest reaches of the planetary bodies in the sky. It wasn't until about the late 1700s when Uranus was discovered that our whole paradigm changed. But up until then, it was Saturn that was the slower moving and the further out planet. Give it that much more power and significance. And in this way, Saturn and the energy of Capricorn as ruling planet of Capricorn, it speaks to the sense of awareness as to what it is ultimately the higher needs are, the higher goals are, where it is that time is either of the essence or what it is that is worth putting time into. The devil card does remind us that indulgences, overindulgence in just about anything is something to be mindful of because it's almost as if we can lose ourselves, lose our higher nature uh, in indulging certain forms. But here's the thing, the devil as depicted on this card has very large angelic wings. And it is those angelic wings that speak to a sense of protection. It is this angel that is being very kind to a goat. And the kindness itself is especially intriguing. And it does suggest that even if there are very strong emotions and perhaps strong experiences as well, 
there is a sense here of understanding what is worth focusing on, what is worth sacrificing for and finding protection in the midst of it. This figure that is part devil, part angel, it is said that the uh, devil was a fallen angel uh, himself. So at some point and at one time was especially close to the divine, close to the source. Well, he is wearing an inverted pentagram. Now the pentagram is a sacred symbol. It represents the uh, main elements where it comes to working with the elements. It's a magical symbol and a cult symbol at that. When it is inverted, that can suggest that either priorities are not in balance and it can also speak to a sense where there isn't a natural sense of things being where they are supposed to be, where they need to be. It also speaks to a sense of self-reliance instead of higher reliance. It is often said and contemplated, especially by mystics and spiritual people, that it is the devil that speaks to our ego and overemphasis on self. And it is in this card that we can see an angel that is being represented in the same figure that can provide us relief from an overemphasis on simply being about our own needs. Now, sometimes selfishness, egoness in an unhealthy way arises from pain. And as you look at this card, you see at the bottom here, some pretty difficult states are represented. We have here depictions of abuse, drunk driving, burglary, adultery, and lying. And in that, these chains, right? As they say, what a tangled web we weave when first we plan to deceive. I am also thinking about how it is this that speaks to how complicated our connections can be with ourselves, with each other, and how it is that even the best of us sometimes can give in to lower indulgences, lower impulses, and maybe make some mistakes that we might regret. Remember, the key to remember with this card is that you're able to see above it and that either it is going to represent a moment of addressing some mistake in the past that may be rooted in one of these experiences that this card is suggesting at the very bottom, or this is going to represent a key moment that allows you to choose not to participate in these given experiences. Given that we see two people here, it can be that there is an influence uh, in your life or another person who may be indulging you or may be a part of uh, what allows or gives permission or brings about one of these experiences to pass. And so it becomes about you rising above it, realizing that you don't have to choose to indulge those particular behaviors. If you know that there are certain people and they behave in ways that is abusive towards you, you can decide not to participate in an exchange like that to practice self-care. If you know that maybe you have a tendency and you know somebody else has a tendency to overindulge, it may be a good idea to ensure that you have somebody there who is a designated driver uh, or to make the decision that instead of spending time with people who maybe don't think about the larger consequences, that maybe it's a good idea at a moment like this to focus instead on self, to focus instead on kindness and the more simple pleasures. To me, taking care of an animal, right? That is a very simple pleasure, but it also speaks very profoundly to the small moments of our day to day, that being a space where we can express kindness, where it is that we can find gentleness and where it is that we can find the sacred as well. And so what I would invite you to do is be mindful of these particular stakes, but know that it doesn't have to pass more that this is going to represent a moment of a choice. Is it that you are going to indulge these lower experiences and choose something greater? Or is it that uh, instead you are going to bring a sense of perspective to where it is that you have been so that you can more further align with a higher, more loving vision, more loving destiny for your life? 
Now card number two is the Hierophant. Now the Hierophant is a card that is associated with the sign of Taurus. So right there we see a focus this month taking place towards understanding money matters. So it has to do with earning money and spending money. And this card in particular speaks to the acquiring of possessions. Now, when I see this golden bull on this card, I'm reminded of that very famous scene in uh, the Charleston Heston movie about Moses, right? And Moses comes out and he sees this giant golden bull as depicted in this movie and he freaks out. That's a nice way to put it, but he really doesn't like that. Uh, but there's this understanding that the bull especially in ancient religions we see again and again strong associations of fertility of abundance uh, and the blessings of abundance associated with this animal and the golden depiction of the bull is something that we see across different cultures as well in ancient traditions in particular now the sign of taurus also speaks to self-esteem and self-worth and that may be an area uh, that there may be some focus on in terms of uh, helping yourself to grow to strengthen in some way in that regard again the golden bull when you think about a bull a bull is really strong it is determined, it is focused, and this bull in particular is one that's holding a lot of riches. The greatest riches that we truly have is within us. And where it is that you are connecting to a greater sense of self-value so that you can move towards greater prosperity, or perhaps it is that you're redefining prosperity in greater terms of self-love, that may very well be an important theme for you this month. Now, also take into consideration that the Hierophant card uh, speaks to a spiritual teacher, a spiritual mentor. This is a card that can represent teachers or people in some way guiding you, even just getting really good advice that stands out. Maybe one way that you experience this card over the course of this month. The advice would be, of course, is to connect with people that you know are those that provide you with good advice, good insights, other perspectives that may be needed. The Hierophant can represent somebody who may even be an astrologer, for example. Uh, it can also be a book with a lot of wisdom. Sometimes with the Hierophant, we go even deeper. We go to ancient wisdom as well. As we examine the card more closely, you can see that this uh, two figures here, and they are in some sort of a cathedral. So a sacred space, and it looks especially grand, one with a whole lot of riches. But we see here one figure that is uh, a worker, right? Someone who is a helper, who is actually in the trenches of getting the gold from this golden bull. And then you have the actual leader, the, the higher figure, who is the bearer of all of the riches that maybe uh, have been facilitated by this other figure. And you can also notice that the ages look representatively different as well. And so this does suggest that as much as it is that the older person or someone with great advice or spiritual insight, maybe someone that holds riches in some way that may not be literal, it is advice itself that can facilitate riches in you it may also be the case that there's a middle person of some kind, uh, perhaps somebody younger, perhaps somebody who feels like an equal or a peer. And especially when I think about this uh, figure, looks to be someone who has a youthfulness about them. They have the uh, nimbleness so that they can actually go in there and go to that bull. And so there is a quiet courage. And so it may very well be one of these types of figures who helps facilitate an introduction or facilitates a sense of you coming into contact with this higher advice, higher spiritual understanding that can represent great riches. But it may also be a middle person who connects you with someone or connects you with some wisdom that is a lot more practical 
that does have to do with you understanding where it is that opportunity may be for you, perhaps financial opportunity, opportunity to earn more money. And finally, in this card, we can see on the scepter, it is filled with um, Egyptian symbols of fertility um, and of wisdom as well. We have the moon there, uh, which has long been held as a sacred understanding of the wisdom of emotion itself. But this is being held apart. It is being looked at apart. And it is that connection to ancient wisdom that ultimately is a powerful symbol of power and even authority. And so it may very well be that a key person who holds some authority, either practically facilitates a financial opportunity for you, or more personally is somebody who is able to guide you in a direction of connecting with the wisdom within. Card number three is the lovers. So this is uh, something that maybe a lot of people will rejoice. Of course, this on the surface of it can represent reconnecting with someone or meeting somebody brand new. It can suggest a new understanding between you and the partners that are already in your life. Now these could be romantic partners. It does say lovers after all. And when we look closely at this card, we can see this lunar figure off in the corner uh, carrying a bow and arrow, aiming the arrow, but it is the arrow that has fire to it. So there's this sense of passion awakened. This may be within an established bond. This may be with somebody brand new, but that sense of awakening that attraction can bring, well, that may be part of the picture for this month ahead. Now, this is a card that also features figures that we saw earlier in card number one, the figures that were depicted, we see them here again. Whereas in card number one, we saw these two figures entangled in a variety of different experiences that brought about greater complexity. It is now that we see uh, these two figures surrounded by other couples who are observing themselves, sort of a higher vision of themselves. And so this can represent a time where within partnerships, romantic, but even business partnerships as well, there can be a sense of looking forward, looking to the future, looking towards something that feels more idealistic, more ideal, even magical as well. Now this could be hope, hope for a more ideal future ahead, but it can also represent a quiet sense of promise. Now that's where we do need to be careful. Overpromising is something uh, that can happen sometimes and seeing things much more idealistically than they are, well, that's what allows us to connect with new people anyways. But what this card suggests is where possible, you may want to pace yourself, but look, that horse is there. And if you know anything about horses, they have a will of their own. They go off riding and they will take you in all kinds of directions. This is a white horse, right? We think about the knight in, uh, on a shining white horse. That's where you have to be careful with this because no one can rescue us from ourselves. And it is when we have these strong connections to other people where we feel pulled towards them, a fiery pull towards them. It is in that connection that ultimately we are led to our learning. We are led to our lessons and that's what attraction and relationships and that feeling of butterflies, that is ultimately what it is meant to show us. But the great thing is that this card represents is hope. Looking to the stage, looking at something more exalted, looking at this beautiful ideal image is ultimately what allows us to stay in the game anyways, what allows us to go through sometimes difficult learning. Now the lover's card is strongly associated with the sign of Gemini. And Gemini can be duplicitous, right? So of course it is a sign of twins. There is a desire to see oneself in another, a desire to connect with someone on a twin flame level, if you will. This is furthered by that flame there. However, Gemini is also an energy that can have a healthy detachment, that is able to see different perspectives and ultimately 
is looking for a sense of truly being at ease with another person. The twins are, after all, siblings. To be that relaxed, to be that able to be yourself with another person is ultimately the aim. But in order to do that, we almost have to move through illusion because as long as we keep that sense of distance between uh, where we may be and what it is that we feel is uh, what we are hoping for, instead of actually being there to communicate, to speak, to talk, to engage in ideas, then we may never know if we've actually found somebody that we really can be ourselves with. If we're presenting an image that is more ideal because of all the different ways we are feeling very passionately entangled in a moment or in an introduction or in a sense of a reawakening of a bond that we may have with somebody already, well, it can only be through talking things out. It is Gemini that is an air sign. Air signs inherently have a level of equality to them. Air signs fall in love with their best friend. And it is air signs that also speak to an ability to say, these are what I hope for, these are what my feelings are, and yet able to see things more rationally at the same time. Rationality is a gift. It's one of the many gifts we have as human beings. We have free will. We have the power of surrender. We have the power of faith. All of these are within us. And what this card is suggesting is that as much as it is that we may feel that sense of uh, desire, that sense of looking forward, which is beautiful, it is only by actually speaking to another person. It is only when we're able to truly relax and be ourselves that more genuine connections can be made. Card number four is the Emperor. How perfect a card that is associated with the energy of the sign of Aries. What is gonna be happening? Well, look, as we begin the month, and actually just before we begin this month of August, we are going to have Mars in the sign of Aries in shadow going retrograde next month. There's a whole other video and series of videos on my website, NadiaShaw.com, that talk about the Mars retrograde season. But for this particular card, we have the sense of a figure, confident, moving forward, even charging forward with tremendous passion, a ball of fire, but also that ball almost looks like a crystal ball, right? What do we do with a crystal ball? We see what's coming up, right? It is one of those uh, divinatory uh, symbols. It's that we see the future. And where is it that we want to passionately move towards our future? Where is it that we feel fired up with ideas, with possibilities, with hope? That is part of what this card represents. It speaks to being a pioneer, but it also speaks to uh, being impulsive, and that is part of the Aries energy as well. Now, an emperor, when you think about that role, ultimately an emperor is um, someone with authority. It is someone who is a ruler, and it is someone who does uh, have power to change the fates of people, to address matters of great importance to uh, many people as well. And so it may be, in a very literal way, this can represent meeting somebody like this. Somebody who has a tremendous amount of will, a tremendous amount of passion, a certain presence, perhaps somebody with an entrepreneurial spirit, but they do have a sense of having authority or having say over what happens, not only with themselves, but perhaps the direction of a particular creative project. Now, as we look at the card even more closely, that crystal ball, it could also be seen as like the planet. So it's like, you know, setting the world on fire. That is a phrase that we use for someone uh, with such an incredible reach and an ability to have a lot of people become aware of them or to talk about them. Now, whether that is you or whether that is someone else that enters your life who represents these principles, that can be indicated here. But I would invite you to look even more closely because what we have here is a giant ram, right? Ram, uh, again, an animal strongly associated with the sign of Aries. But if you look even closer, 
Look at the feet, right? One leg has no foot. The other leg has a flip-flop. And what are uh, flip-flops? They are flimsy. Uh, they represent a lack of grounding that is further affirmed by the fact that there is only one foot here. And so we have somebody who is lit up with ideas, with passion, but also with fiery words, right? A, a sense of being competitive or even combative. But is there substance even there? Are they hiding behind a mask? Are they hiding behind an archetype of some kind where the actual person may not have as much power as they would like you to believe or like to present themselves as? Look also at the scepter. Um, here we see that it's actually a mop, right? If you look closely, it is a mop. This is about cleaning up, but it's also almost the opposite of what a scepter is supposed to represent. The scepter is supposed to be about power, about authority. It represents, if we think back to the earlier card that we had with the Hierophant, it represented the achievement, the accomplishment, the ability to uh, direct and change uh, and influence, but it is almost as if the mop is the opposite of that. The, the mop represents, um, if we think about it, think about essential workers, right? They are the people right now where we're realizing how much of the society, how much of the world really depends on them, and yet they tend to be the lowest paid, they tend to be the least respected, and so this may very well be one of these people who is expressing frustration and that could end up being a notable moment over the course of this month where you have somebody where maybe they have a very strong personality, uh, maybe impulsive, maybe quick to react, maybe even quick to anger. Um, but when you look at how much power they actually have, how grounded are their ideas, what are they actually able to do? There may be a disconnect there. And so this could be meeting one of these types of people. But it also invites us to take a step back, right? It is wonderful to believe in yourself, to have confidence, to want to go out there into the world and do great things. However, what is actually there? What is the substance? What is actually being done? What actions are supporting it? Because it is the sign of Aries and this figure we're seeing here that is all ideas, that is all passion, but ultimately knows that what is at the foundation is either non-existent or not sufficiently supportive. So this could be somebody, I will say, there are great enlightened ways to understand this card, but this card can also speak to uh, somebody who's uh, combative and filled with threats uh, or accusations even. And I'm so sorry to say that, but that can happen with this card. And yet for all that, uh, there really is not a whole lot going on uh, underneath that. You may have a figure there that is uh, in front of this person, someone who is like a ram, um, who is trying to express how much strength this person has. But again, the reality may not be there. It may represent somebody who is uncomfortable to be around, somebody that maybe you don't want to interact with if you care about you being at peace with yourself. But this could also be an explanation or representation of where it is that perhaps within you, there is a disconnect. Within you, you're trying to uh, show force where instead you're being asked to ensure that the ground that you're on, that the foundation that you have is strong. Now this card might also represent you. You've got all heart. Look at that beautiful symbol of the sun right on the heart of this person. Um, and all this passion, all this fire, all this determination. But it may be this card that is inviting you to consider where is it that your feet are planted? And while it's wonderful to have that brave face, to show the confidence, to show the passion at the same time, and sometimes it is valuable 
to also make sure that you are standing on solid ground so that you can be that much more impactful going forward from there. Card number five is the magician. This is actually one of my very favorite cards, I have to tell you. Um, it is a card that has a strong association with the planet Mercury. And Mercury, of course, is nimble, is about being a jack of all trades. It is about being brilliant and bright, but also becoming aware of all the ways in which one can direct their attention, direct their energy. It is about being able to do a whole lot of things and maybe being able to actually contribute many different skills to a given aim and to a given project. Now, if you look closely at this card, we see here a nod uh, to a wizardly figure, right? You think about the Wizard of Oz behind a curtain and nobody really saw or was aware of what was behind the curtain. But we see this figure here directing a performance. Nobody is looking at this figure directly, but ultimately what they are doing is profoundly healing. Look at what is in the hand of this figure. It is a symbol of healing and medicine itself. And so this figure, what they are doing, the way in which they are directing their energy, their attention is profoundly healing for them, but also may facilitate a sense of healing in others. Now, on a very literal level, this can represent somebody doing something good, perhaps on your behalf, pulling strings, if you will, to help you in some way that ends up being a healing influence. Or maybe it's something that they feel they need to do for themselves, whether or not you're aware of it. Again, that sense of pulling some strings for you. It may not even be that you need to ask for it, but that it is done this helpful person, but what you just want to be careful of is that again, going back to this idea of illusion, that it isn't just you're being presented with something that looks lovely, that looks beautiful, but is there substance there as well? Now the symbol of medicine and physicians that this uh, figure behind the curtain is holding is called a catechus. And we see a lot of depictions actually of Mercury uh, in ancient Greece as uh, holding this catechus. Now, what we do want to be mindful of though, is that Mercury was a very tricky figure. And so he uh, represents merchants and communication and being witty, but also had an association uh, with uh, other types of people like outlaws and people sort of on the fringes. He was really like for everybody in his own way, adding to that duplicitous side of him. So as much as this symbol and this figure can represent healing, understand that uh, there are key aspects here that may not be known and that a lot of us are much more complex than what it seems on the surface. Now, if you look at the audience, what are they directed towards? What are they looking at this large lunar type of figure? And again, this moon shows up again and again uh, throughout this deck. And what is the moon but emotion, right? Where it is that we are seeing with eyes of emotion or we're paying attention uh, to particularly emotional words at the very top of the moon is Mercury. So it is emotions coloring the mind, coloring perception. Mercury has to do with all things related to learning, communication, perception, understanding but it is ultimately in this card rooted in how we feel. And so it may very well feel like the feelings of others are being directed in key ways. Sometimes that's comfortable, but it's not necessarily accurate, right? Our emotions are built on a variety of things and much of them are based on things that were put into place before it was that we could even speak. The moon represents our comfort zone, comfort foods. It represents how we were cared for, how we felt about the care that we received. Again, sometimes before we could even talk and it is where it is that we feel most comfortable. It's like we have all of these people, all of these parts of ourselves, all this attention being given to what it is that feels most comfortable, what it is that feels most easy. 
And that is ultimately coloring perception, right? That is what is at the base of what we're talking about, what we're thinking about. And yet there is something more rational behind the scenes, behind the curtain. Now, finally, we see here eight white doves. Now, what's interesting, among many things that's interesting with this, is that one of the doves is so high up that we don't even see it at first. And the number seven, like beyond just the eighth, right? The number seven itself is a, a number of mind. It is one that has a lot of mystical qualities to it, meditative qualities to it. But ultimately, it isn't the seven. It is the eight doves that are here. And eight is a number that represents, on the one hand, infinity, but has very strong associations with wealth. And so it may very well be that our higher aims are about understanding higher mysteries, about moving ourselves to more authentic sources of wealth. Or it may just be that we feel more of different parts of ourselves are thinking about financial matters, thinking about transformation, how to turn things around. The white dove is, of course, peace. It is a peaceful energy. And white doves flying is about the peace being sent out, changing circumstances. It isn't just a peace that we're keeping to ourselves or we're wondering how to direct, but rather it has the ability to be spread out even beyond the obvious uh, places that we may look and ultimately i do think that this card speaks to a sense of being more empowered a sense of things changing starting a new chapter feeling a sense that there is some control that we are able to direct energy in a positive way and in a way that ultimately does bring us healthy transformation and greater peace as well what this card says is there may be a desire to rise above emotion and emotion may feel very strong with a month like this, but you will rise. And as you rise, you're able to transform your circumstances and even transform circumstances around you, allowing you to feel a sense of fresh perspectives and a brand new beginning. And the sixth and final card is the Hermit. The Hermit is uh, one of the more powerful cards I've found. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot happening on the surface. After all, just looking at this card, it's someone at a desk writing, right? That seems to be quite the solitary activity. Like with the energy of Virgo, it doesn't always look like there's a whole lot of bells and whistles happening externally. And yet this can be an incredibly fruitful time. Virgo is the energy of mastery because it understands that what you repeatedly do you become or you are, or at the very least, you become really good at. You are considered an expert at anything you do for 10,000 hours, according to Malcolm Gladwell. And this card speaks to that sense of actually being with oneself. Again, putting in the time, putting in the hours, being willing to contemplate more deeply, to study more deeply, to go beyond just a surface knowledge, and to reach a greater depth. Now, this is further affirmed by the fact that this person is surrounded by books that speak to ancient and modern wisdom. So we see here a sacred religious text mixed in with a psychological and psychoanalytical texts as well. So this very expansive understanding of wisdom uh, and of truth and what truth it is that motivates us, that guides us, and even the truths that inspire us are all indicated here. So this might be a time when you are connecting to a deep sense of wisdom within. Look, this card, it's the hermit after all. It speaks to being off on your own, spending time on your own, enjoying having time by yourself to contemplate things more deeply to put your life in perspective and to make sense of recent events and recent happenings. Now, when I see this card, I think of somebody who is like a therapist or a psychiatrist, just in terms of the depiction here. Uh, again, somebody who locks themselves away to contemplate more deeply, but also may create a safe space where you could dive into the mysteries of self, of the meaning of life, of your own uh, existence and so this card may represent 
one of these types of people that you don't necessarily know from around and out and about, but rather you are able to actually sit with and be with to explore the depths of what it is that may really be going on within you. But of course, the most obvious way this card is read very often, it has to do with spending time on your own, making sense of your life for a little while and deciding what's worth doing. Now it is Virgo that speaks to the sacredness of our smallest moments. And it is here that we are reminded that what it is that is true for us, what it is that is spiritual for us, ultimately isn't about the higher concepts, even though sometimes it is, and that's important in and of itself. But very often it is what we demonstrate to ourselves that reveals what we really believe about the world, about the divine. It is the thoughts that we hold that become a sacred prayer. And it is this card that reminds us to consider what our contemplation is. Consider the disconnect between what it is that we believe, what the ideal may be, and what it is that we're actually living and demonstrating in our smallest moments. How is it that we are directing our minds to ensure that our minds stay focused on the best ideals and stay focused on the things that actually matter to us, the things that are actually worth doing and repeatedly doing at that. Now, if we look at the table uh, that this person is sitting at, there are uh, two major things we see in addition to the books, right? The two big things we see on the one hand is the moon, this lunar symbol. And so there's this sense of being able to be separate from the emotions, being able to put them aside, put them on a table somewhere so that you can focus on things that matter more. If you look at what this person is doing, they're writing, right? There's a graph there as well. So there's a sense of practical matters, trying to find balance, uh, trying to come up with the right figures, uh, evaluations as well are indicated here. And ultimately these are activities that are separate from the emotional uh, whims that sometimes we can go on. Now, if you are somebody who's ever taken a class with me, uh, or if you're a superstar, participate in the uh, new moon events that I do and the meditation that I do there, I always have a segment in any meditation that I do where I invite people to uh, consider putting any thoughts of the past or questions about the future to just put them on a table somewhere in their mind as part of the meditation, to put them aside. And I do that so that it invites people to be really present in the moment, because I do believe that the present is where the power is. It is by being completely in the moment that we find freedom, we find even the divine. Uh, according to the Buddha, we find our essential nature when it is that we truly allow ourselves to be present here and now. So being able to put the emotions aside so that you can focus on things that uh, matter to you more in a given moment, so that you can focus more on what needs to be done, on what's worth doing, uh, may be part of the theme of this time. Now what we see on the other side of this person is that we see uh, the goddess Ceres, the depiction of Ceres. So, and to the Romans, she was called Ceres. To the ancient Greeks, she was called Demetra. Uh, and she is the mom of Persephone. But if you saw my year ahead forecast for 2020, uh, and especially the decade ahead, where I spoke about the decade ahead quite a bit, um, I spoke about 2021, when Ceres would be conjunct Uranus intimately involved with this square that's going to be going on, this ongoing square, intimately involved with Uranus square Jupiter, Uranus square Saturn. Uh, and this is going to be a representative of a few different things. So Ceres, of course, has to do with the harvest. It has to do with grains. So in a very practical way, it can be this card that speaks to an ability to understand what you need to feel nourished, an ability to separate oneself from uh, the desires necessarily of what you need to feel cared for, what you need to feel okay, again, connecting to the emotion, what you need to feel satiated, and instead to focus on the task at hand. But of course, this is 
the goddess of the harvest. And so there's this sense of being able to reap, a sense of reaping in terms of what it is you're actually doing. So whether it is that on some part of you, you know that there's some outcome that you're looking forward to, there's an expectation of reaping, and so you decide to do what you need to do so that you can get to that place, or whether it is that this card can represent maybe not taking the best of care of you, being separate from a genuine sense of care in favor of what needs to get done, what needs to be understood, that may be part of the theme that you may have this month. Now, of course, we may externalize these energies as well. You may meet somebody who feels way too busy, way too unavailable, uh, all caught up in what it is that they need to do, who may not be able to actually give the type of attention or care that you're hoping for. I'm sorry to say, but it does happen. It may end up being a temporary thing, but look, Look at the background to this card. We see here birds in the background having a lot of fun. We see this beautiful image to the back of this person. And so whether this represents an inability to relax and enjoy life and to be out and about, or whether it is that in the back of their mind, on some level they know the time for that may come, but right now they've got to focus this may very well be one of those times where either you are finding yourself interacting with a person like this, where you want to be out there frolicking and enjoying and being free, but this person is way busy in what they're doing or way caught up in what they're doing. But it could also represent you deciding that there are certain things that you need to focus your mind on knowing that the time for enjoyment and fun and relaxation, it will come in its own time. So that is it for my very first pick a card video. What did you think? Do you like videos like this? Uh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do more of them. And of course, you can learn all about the tarot and its connection with astrology in particular uh, by joining me for the autumn session of synchronicityuniversity.com. If you sign up by August 21st, uh, you can pick your own tuition rate as low as just $5 a class. Uh, we are going to have a very exciting, very full autumn session, part one and two. And we'll be diving into the tarot with that, in addition to diving into Lilith, diving into the moon, diving into Mercury. So we're going to have a lot of fun together. You can learn more by clicking on the link in the description below. And again, let me know. What do you think? What card did you get? How did you feel about it? Does it resonate with where it is that you feel some themes are already moving you forward as we move further into the summer? I look forward to reading you and thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. It'll be a great month. Enjoy.